Elvis Presley is best known for his long and influential career, which has spawned a number of biographical films about the king of rock and roll. Despite the fact that it has been decades since Presley's tragic death, songs like Hound Dog and Can't Help Falling in Love remain popular to this day. Presley's career may have been hampered by drug use and other scandals, but there is no denying the impact he had on music and the music industry. Music would not be the same without the king of rock and roll. In this video, we'll talk about why Elvis Presley is so famous. What makes Elvis Presley famous? Elvis Presley is well known for his significant contributions to music and live performances, which earned him the title of king of rock and roll and cemented his place in rock history. Scene and Julian Lennon, the sons of fellow rock legend John Lennon, presented the King with his induction into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 1986. During the early 1950s, Elvis Presley popularized live music for young audiences by modernizing blues, country, and bluegrass genres to help shape rock and roll as we know it today. Presley not only changed the type of music people listened to, but he also began to break the rules of extreme modesty for stage performers. Fans adored Presley for his ability to dance and move his hips while playing his guitar, inspiring an entire generation of musicians to abandon the stiff stage presences that they were forced to portray. Because of the King, musicians were able to dance and boogie to their music alongside their audiences and were praised for their dance moves. While modern youth may find Elvis Presley's dated dance moves amusing or even embarrassing, the parents of 1950s youth saw Presley's on-stage dance moves as scandalous and a threat to their moral compass. By the 1960s, Elvis Presley had accepted his reputation as a bad boy and began to dress more extravagantly. On December 3, 1968, during a television special, Presley was quoted as saying, if you're looking for trouble, you've come to the right place. Elvis Presley was one of the first musical rebels to spark the major musical shift that began in the 1950s and 1960s. Where did Elvis Presley come from? Elvis Presley was born on January 8, 1935 in Tupelo, Mississippi to Vernon and Gladys Presley. The Presleys lived in East Tupelo, which was known at the time as the roughest town in North Mississippi. Presley, like many American children of his generation, was born into poverty, and the Presleys were among the 20.1% of unemployed Americans. Despite the fact that his parents could not afford to raise a child, they adored him. Elvis Aaron Presley was born as one of twin sons, but his brother Garen died shortly after birth. Presley's parents told him that he carried his and his late brother's strength to help him and his mother cope with the loss of Jesse Garen Presley. Presley's father built a two-room shotgun home with the help of his grandfather and uncle, which is now known as the birthplace home of Elvis Presley, and is still visited by thousands of fans every year. However, when Elvis was only three years old, his father and two other men were arrested for altering a $4 check, and the Presleys lost their shotgun home. The Presleys were forced to move from rental property to rental property after his father was released from prison. The Assembly of God Church, where his parents had met, was the only constant in young Elvis' life. Presley discovered his love of singing while attending church, where he met his guitar teacher, Pastor Frank Smith. Presley's musical ability was recognized by his teacher, Oleta Grimes, who introduced him to his principal. Presley entered his first talent contest at the Mississippi-Alabama Fair, thanks to his principal, who had inspired him to pursue a career in show business. Is Elvis Presley related to Abraham Lincoln? Yes, Elvis Presley is related to Abraham Lincoln, the former president of the United States, through his father Vernon's family. Presley is not only related to Lincoln, but also to former president Jimmy Carter. The link between the king of rock and roll and the president who abolished slavery began in the early 1700s with an Englishman named Isaiah Harrison visiting the United States. Harrison had two wives during his lifetime, Elizabeth and Abigail. Elvis Presley was a descendant of Elizabeth Harrison, who is an ancestor of Vernon Presley. 
Abraham Lincoln was born in 1809, generations before Vernon or Elvis Presley, as a descendant of Abigail Harrison. Former President Jimmy Carter and the King share a common ancestor, Valentine Pressler, Carter's sixth great-grandfather and a distant uncle of the rock legend. Presley's name is one of many Pressler variations, including Pressler, 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 and Bressler. This means Jimmy Carter is Elvis Presley's sixth cousin once removed. When Presley died, newly inaugurated President Carter publicly mourned the loss of his distant relative and one of America's most influential citizens at the time. While reflecting on Presley's legacy, Carter expressed his belief that Elvis Presley's death deprives our country of part of itself. However, not all of Presley's relatives are former presidents. Riley Keough, the Mad Max Fury Road actress, is the king of rock and roll's eldest granddaughter. She is the daughter of Lisa Marie Presley and rocker Danny Keough, who previously played bass in Elvis Presley's band. Presley's daughter is still active in preserving her father's memory and is grateful for his fans' ongoing support. Was Elvis Presley in the military? Yes, Elvis Presley was drafted into the United States Army on December 20, 1957, after receiving his draft notice at his newly purchased Graceland Mansion. Presley was spending the holidays with his family at the time. When the King of Rock and Roll received his two-year draft notice, the United States Army was inundated with letters from his adoring fans pleading for the musician to be spared. The United States Army didn't care that Elvis Presley was the most popular musician in the country, so he was drafted after only one deferment to finish work on his film King Creole. Elvis Presley was sworn in as a private in the Army on March 24, 1958, in Memphis, Tennessee. Presley was granted emergency leave during his basic training in order to see his dying mother before she died in August of 1958. Presley was sent to Europe on the USS General Randall, where he served in Friedberg, Germany, with Company D, 32nd Tank Battalion, 3rd Armored Division. Presley rose to the rank of surgeon as a result of his work in Germany and was able to return home to serve from his off-base residence. Presley stayed in Memphis with his father, grandmother, and some of his Memphis friends for the remainder of his service. Presley was able to work as a surgeon during the day and host parties or jam sessions at night thanks to this arrangement. Priscilla Beaulieu, 14, was introduced to Elvis Presley, 24, during one of these jam sessions by one of his army friends. Despite Presley's deployment, Colonel Tom Parker continued to release pre-recorded singles to keep Presley in the public's mind. Did Elvis Presley write his own music? No. Elvis Presley didn't often write his own music, with all of his known writing credits being pieces that he only co-wrote with countless other writers. Presley is best known for co-writing songs such as You'll Be Gone and That's Someone You Never Forget. According to Ben Sharp's book, Writing for the King, more than 140 different songwriters contributed to the King of Rock and Roll. One of the most common compliments that writers gave Presley was for his ability to truly understand the essence of a song and then completely transform it into his own. Despite the fact that so many songwriters assisted Presley in creating his hit songs, there are a few songwriters who contributed more significantly to Presley's success. Jerry Lieber and Mike Stoller, better known as the lieber Stoller duo, were among the first songwriters to write for Elvis Presley. Many of Presley's early hits were written by this duo, including Hound Dog, Love Me Tender, and Jailhouse Rock. The Lieber Stoller duo first met Elvis Presley when he was 14 years old, and they were the ones who assisted him in making his first record. Stoller and Lieber wrote 20 songs for Elvis Presley and went on to write more than 70 charted hit songs during their 40-year career in the music industry. Ben Wiseman was the songwriter who wrote the most songs for Elvis Presley, with 57 songs recorded by Presley over the course of 20 years. Since Presley's first album, Wiseman had been writing songs for him, including First in Line, Happy Ending, Don't Leave Me Now, and Follow That Dream. Although Presley was not a songwriter, his stage presence was enough to leave a lasting impression. 
before Elvis Presley, who owned Graceland. The S.E. 2 family owned Graceland before Elvis Presley purchased it from them in the spring of 1957. The king was only 22 years old at the time and paid $100,000 for the 500-acre farm. Graceland had been owned by the same family that built the mansion before Presley bought it. Ruth Brown Moore and Dr. Thomas Moore founded Graceland in 1939. Grace, one of Ruth Brown Moore's nieces, was named after the property, which quickly became the talk of Memphis. Ruth Marie Moore, Moore's daughter, went on to become an extremely accomplished musician as a harpist for the Memphis Symphony Orchestra. It was not uncommon for the Moors to host classical music recitals in their front room at the time. Graceland was designed with music in mind, making it the ideal home for Elvis Presley. The front room, which had once housed a classical ensemble and its audience, began to host Presley's famous jam sessions. It only took Presley a year of stardom to earn enough money to buy the famous Tennessee mansion. Graceland has transitioned from the king of rock and roll's home to a memorial museum with an entire staff dedicated to preserving the mansion and many of Presley's personal belongings. Fans who travel to Memphis to see Graceland will only see about 10% of all the Presley-related items that Graceland has archived. Graceland archives and various departments from Elvis Presley Enterprises maintain the Graceland campus. This museum is known for hosting frequent celebrity visitors, including Kevin Smith, Weird Al Yankovic, Oprah Winfrey, and even Ringo Starr as a result of their dedication. How many marriages did Elvis Presley have? Elvis Presley married only once in his life, despite having deep relationships with many of Hollywood's it girls, including Anne Margaret Olsen and Natalie Wood. Priscilla Beaulieu was only 14 years old when she first met Elvis Presley. Presley was 10 years her senior. While the couple was considered Hollywood's it couple during their relationship, Priscilla Presley became known as the child bride because they began dating in her early adolescence. Priscilla Presley stated in her memoir, Elvis and Me, that she was 21 years old when their relationship first became sexual following their marriage in 1967, despite how young she was at the time. Lisa Marie Presley, the couple's only child, was born only a year after their marriage. While Presley was eager to have a child, his sexual relationship with Priscilla Presley ended with the birth of his daughter. Elvis Presley told his wife that he couldn't have sex with someone who had given birth to a child. Even before he married, Elvis Presley had an affair with his Viva La Vegas co-star Anne Margaret Olsen. Olsen, who spent a lot of alone time with Elvis Presley at his request, was Priscilla Presley's biggest worry leading up to her wedding. Priscilla Presley divorced her rock star husband in 1972 after years of infidelity. In 1973, the couple filed for divorce. Presley would replace his ex-wife with Linda Thompson, a 22-year-old beauty queen. Thompson dated Elvis Presley for a little more than four years before calling it quits due to Presley's rampant drug abuse and cheating. Ginger Alden, the last woman to date Elvis Presley, discovered him dead in 1977. How did Elvis Presley die? Elvis Presley died from heart failure when he was only 42 years old. Ginger Alden, Presley's fiance, discovered him on the floor of the bathroom in his master suite in his Memphis mansion on the afternoon of August 16, 1977. Alden immediately summoned an ambulance, which rushed the King to Baptist Memorial Hospital where doctors were unable to revive him and declared him dead at 3.30 p.m. that same day. Presley's heart failure was the result of years of heavy prescription drug abuse. Elvis Presley, like many other musicians of the time, had a history of abusing opiates, sedatives, and barbiturates. A toxicology analysis of the king of rock and roll revealed that Presley had high levels of Percodin, Demerol, Quaaludes, Codeine, and other drugs in his blood. Years after Elvis Presley's death, Dr. George Nicopoulos of Memphis was blamed for his untimely death. Nicopoulos was barred from practicing medicine for three months 
after prescribing more than 12,000 pills to Presley in the last 20 months of his life. After being questioned about knowing Presley's publicly disclosed drug habits, Nicopolis argued that the number of drugs he was prescribing was for his entire entourage in an attempt to save his medical license from permanent suspension. Elvis Presley traveled with three suitcases full of drugs with him wherever he went. Nicopolis later stated that he gave Presley whatever drug he requested because he didn't want Presley to turn to street drugs or another prescriber. In November 1982, Nicopolis was charged with 11 felony counts of over-prescribing drugs, but he was acquitted. He kept his medical license until 1995, when the Tennessee Board of Medical Examiners permanently suspended it. Did Elvis Presley's daughter enjoy the new Elvis film? Lisa Marie Presley, the daughter of rock and roll legend Elvis Presley, did enjoy the 2022 film Elvis. In an Instagram post, Presley expressed her gratitude to Baz Luhrmann and Austin Butler for honoring her father's memory and the entire Presley family. According to the King's daughter, Elvis provided some solace during her grief over the death of her son Benjamin Keough. Benjamin Keough committed suicide in 2020, and his family is still figuring out how to deal with their grief. Despite her current state of despair, Lisa Marie Presley wanted to watch Elvis and discovered that she enjoyed it so much that she decided to watch it again. Austin Butler, according to Presley, deserved an Oscar for portraying her father's heart and soul. She also admired Lerman's dedication to creating a beautiful film that she felt her family could be proud of for generations. Her proudest moment in the film was seeing the reaction to the film from Elvis Presley's granddaughters, Riley Keough, Harper Lockwood, and Finley Lockwood. The entire family was able to reconnect and share their pride in Elvis Presley's legacy in a way they had never done before. Lisa Marie Presley only wished her son had been present to watch it with them. If the daughter of the king of rock and roll thinks it's good enough, longtime Elvis Presley fans should give it a look. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell for more celebrity news.